Welcome back to Crossroad Garage and Salvage. Where this week I continue to spend more of Caitlin's college fund in order to teach her about the greatest all-purpose vehicle ever made, AKA the American Land Rover. AKA the first AMC vehicle designed by a French company completely out of right angles, AKA the 2001 Jeep Cherokee XJ. Nope, not, keep, keep going. Not that either. There it is. Don't go anywhere, because this episode could literally save your life. Now, Caitlin, you don't know this, but your dad is actually a bit of an expert on Jeeps. It's also because you think you're better than everybody else? No, it's because I've owned two of them in my life. I had in high school a 93 Jeep Cherokee Sport two-door and a few years ago, I bought a 83 Jeep Grand Wagoneer, last of the Grand Wagoneers, for 1800 bucks and promptly doubled my money by selling it to your uncle. Spider Army. Still sitting in his driveway. <laughs> so you're probably asking yourself, how'd you guys end up with such a sweet vehicle? Well, the other night I was at a volleyball game, Caitlin's volleyball game, and I was doing what I normally do, cruising Facebook Marketplace during the game, and this thing came up for 800 bucks. And I said, it's gotta be worth at least six. So I went and bought it on my way home from the volleyball game. 600 bucks gets you a run and drive in Jeep XJ these days. Let's give it a once over. I haven't really, you know, crawled underneath it. Ooh, Skyjacker. Let's see what we're dealing with. I did notice when I got out the other day, yeah, notice that, has a uh, rust protection uh, guarantee there from Steel Shield, which is great. But I'm gonna guess whenever that was applied, they missed the bottoms of the doors and the rockers and the floors. Other Jeep peeps be taking their doors off, but we be taking our floors off. <laughs> As you guys can see, this, uh, this truck's been in Northern Ohio, so the front clip rotted out. They replaced it with some nice fiberglass pre-runner uh, fenders there. Underneath the hood, this well-ventilated hood, is the legendary four liter Help. inline six, six in a row, ready to tow. This engine is quite arguably the best thing Chrysler ever did. Man's fighting words. Even though it wasn't Chrysler at the time, it was AMC and it was designed by Renault, but it doesn't matter. The French got involved and everything got better. First time that's ever happened. Now, this thing was parked in the driveway right over here last night, but it didn't leak a drop of oil over there. Where? Yeah, exactly. Where was it? There's only two reasons that a four liter doesn't leak oil. It's out or it's almost out. Just kidding. Now, <laughs> the story that I got from the tow truck driver who repossessed this thing and then sold it to me on Facebook Marketplace is that this engine was rebuilt about 40,000 miles ago. So sure, the odometer says 203,000, but the speedometer doesn't go over 40 miles an hour. So who knows how many miles are actually on it. And in addition to that, it runs pretty okay. Oh yeah, a little belt squeal to start the morning. Kaylin Jeeps are known as the uh, number one vehicle for first day, right off the lot modifications. Ooh, looks like this guy never stopped. The uh, mechanical fan over here, electric fan over here, good combo. Uh, all sorts of stuff that looks like it's been plumbed in after the fact. Don't know what that is or where it goes. Uh, back there, it does look like it has a speedometer adjuster there. So I'm guessing that the previous owner didn't have the uh, Goodyear Wranglers on as we do now. Probably had some 36s, We should 38s. put some as big tires as we can find on this. Now, don't let this temporary tag that expires in two days fool you. The title says that the owner of this bought this vehicle 88 days ago for $300. At least that's what he told the government. Oh yeah. The uh, weight reduction on this side is a, just a little bit more less subtle. Reductory. So we've got a set of matching tires on it, which is nice, but the, uh, the wheels are not matching. But at least they're all five lug. This does have, it looks like a rear disc brake conversion set up on it, which is nice. Pretty sure that's a compression fitting, not a flare. That's what you use to hook up a water line to a refrigerator, not your brakes. 
It's got the uh, Bluetooth sway bar set up here. You guys can see that's tucked up out of the way, you know, for when you're not using it. Uh, even though the floors are gone, the unibody uh, frame section actually looks like it's in pretty decent, okay, even shape. Shortcut. If we're gonna become premier vehicle owners, there's a few things we're gonna have to learn. You're gonna have to figure out how to carry a Stanley Cup properly, and I'm gonna have to figure out what a Nalgene bottle is. We're definitely gonna have to figure out how to low speed cruise a mall parking lot. And then of course, there's the most important part about being a Jeep owner, and that is learning the two finger wave. Bro, what are you talking about, man? No, not that. <laughs> From the steering wheel, it's this. There you go. Where did this duck just fall from? This would be a Jeep thing. I really think this would be the perfect day driver. Day driver or daily driver? Nope, you could definitely only drive this for a day. <laughs> no, you could drive this Jeep and any other Jeep anywhere. They are a go anywhere, do anything vehicle. Even in the ocean? Yeah, you could drive a Jeep in the ocean once. Now let's do a quick gauge check. Get oil pressure over there. 40. 40? 40. Water temp. Oh, uh, that says 109. Uh, low. Yeah, it's still warming up. Voltmeter Sorry. over there. Uh, 14. Uh, almost 14. You know, redundancy is what they do in the military. So basically, a Jeep with mechanical gauges is a mil spec vehicle. What about the check engine light? Well, see, again, the XJs were designed by Renault. So it's a French company. They do things a little differently. Uh, that's just there to let you know that the Jeep is running. It's weird, but every Jeep I've ever had, as soon as you turn it on, that light comes on and it stays on the whole time. So it's got to be because they're so quiet. Otherwise, you wouldn't know they're running. All right. Now we're uh, on our way to town here to do Jeep You're things. To me. Huh? Where am I going? AutoZone. Hey, stay off the rumble strips. I know it seems like I might be driving by Braille, but it is definitely just this vehicle vibrating. AutoZone is the place for all Jeep drivers to go to make sure they've got the essentials before they hit the road. A little bit of extra oil, power steering fluid, universal joints, you know, the basics. What is going on on the hood? We were in there for two minutes. It's a Jeep thing. All right, well, they didn't have the uh, specific brand of engine oil that we uh, need in these things, but we did find some uh, stickers in there. And this is one of the most important parts about being a Jeep owner, Caitlin, is making sure that everyone knows you've got a four by four vehicle. That's actually what people mean when they say it's a Jeep thing. What they're saying is, I know that I'm probably in the only trail rated vehicle in this entire parking lot. Got it on there? Did you just run into somebody? Nobody back there. Well, what was that? Put it, put it in park. What was that clunk? The drive shaft? Nope. Hey, apparently this was a SEMA build. It's got a Bluetooth drive shaft. <laughs> Something was banging. Just creep backwards a little bit. Put it in reverse, Harry. Put it in reverse. Hit the brakes. I don't know what that was. We'll find out later when we're on the trail. All right, Caitlin. Now for the first of our challenges today to prove that the 2001 XJ is in fact the greatest all purpose vehicle ever built. Don't run over these bikers. Uh, bikers are Jeep people friends. Uh, they run in the same crowd. They both have the same opinion about who should be on the road and who shouldn't and about where they should drive and where they shouldn't. So that's, you want to be real careful about how you treat bikers when you're in a Jeep. All right. But what we're going to do is go grab a bunch of scrap metal from the house and haul it to the scrap yard because this thing can haul. This thing is scrap. <laughs> now, as a parent, I've cautioned Caitlin a lot about peer pressure and uh, being aware of like cults and groups that want to just oh, influence my. and govern your life. That's that rear shackle bouncing around. 
Okay. And uh, now that she owns a Jeep, I don't have to worry about that because she has a group of people that are there to protect her and guide her and tell her what she needs to think and do. And uh, they'll keep all of the bad peers that would otherwise pressure her away. So this is really like a, as a parent, it makes me feel good. Now, the spaciousness of the back of a Jeep Cherokee is unparalleled. Unless, of course, you're talking about any dozen or so other American vehicles with enormous cargo space. But when you're a Jeep owner, it's unparalleled. So, Caitlin, what I want to do is grab the aluminum we've got over here. So that uh, AC condenser, the intercooler from the F-350, and the radiator. Ugh. Just fits. Lay it on its back. Otherwise, you're dripping on your foot. It's got coolant in it. It's a radiator. Well, yeah. Okay. Inner cooler. It's full. Pour it out and then lay it on its back. It's not going to get anywhere. Just go in there and lay it, it just, on its back. Uh... To the scrapyard. Onward. Now you better behave, little buddy, or you'll end up here too. All right, Caitlin. Now, as a Jeep owner, you're just going to have to get used to the idea that when your friends have something heavy they need towed or they get in a bind, you're gonna be the one they're calling. So I need you to know how to use that uh, tow rope there. This tree fell down in the same storm that knocked our roof out on our house a couple weeks ago. And when it did, well, it took out this telephone line here that ran through the woods. But since I think Bronco owners are the only ones still using landline telephones, apparently nobody's called the telephone company to say, hey, my phone doesn't work. Um, question. Yeah. Why aren't we using the winch? Oh, that winch? Yeah. Uh, that's just for show. It's a Jeep thing. What's your plan there? Um. Cool. Okay. Go ahead and back up into the next county so we can get this tow rope tight. <laughs> <laughs> I only had the 20 foot version in the corner store of my garage. Ooh. Jeep things. Jeep things. Well, Caitlin, looks like it's about to rain here in Northern Ohio. Probably time for us to go off roading, huh? Come on, Caitlin, let's go do Jeep things. When it comes to trail riding, the ability of the Jeep is unparalleled. You keep using the horn. I don't think it means what you think it means. Now, this is just a starter trail. It's like a 37 on the Scoville rating, I think. What? So we're just gonna kind of take it easy here for first time around, just see what's what. We'll let Caitlin have a little fun. shaft rattling not underneath the car the one that's in the back rattling against the back door it's a Jeep thing nope yeah this off-road park doubles as a frisbee golf course on the weekends now Caitlin another thing about being a Jeep owner is eventually you're gonna end up towing something so let's get this hooked up and out of here What? No! 
being a Jeep owner, you gotta you gotta just pick your battles, you know. Some things just aren't worth messing with, trying. It's not like I'm towing a 14,000 pound gooseneck flatbed trailer or anything. I'm just trying to do a little bit of utility work. That's all. So that's what we're doing. We're using the greatest all-purpose vehicle ever built to get some utility work. I know some of you thought he did. He's just going to do a bit about a Jeep getting towed behind an RV. And trust me, if I could have found an RV, I would have done that. But did I really do anything different than that? That's weird. My copper refrigerator line seems to be leaking. So one day later. Oh, don't forget, guys, she's got a push button start. Those are race car parts, Caitlin. Well, it's uh, that day of the week again, garbage day. Which means it's a day that uh, your wife might ask you to take the Jeep Cherokee and go look for good stuff that's set out by the curb that other people want to get rid of, but we might have a use for. So that's what we're going to do. Are there more ducks up here this morning? It's not like we ever find anything. Oh! Good. A couple of patio chairs there. Yes, please. I'll take those. All right. Oh, no. Ah, pouring rusty water all over my pants. That's going to stain. Is that four more good chairs up there next to the garage? Man, punched a hole in our good headliner. I swear there's more ducks up there than when we got out. I wonder if that dog wants a duck toy. Or 87. So whether you're running to town, grabbing some groceries, or navigating on or off-road, the Jeep XJ is really the pinnacle of the modern SUV revolution. In fact, the granddaddy of them all. So basically, Caitlin, what I'm saying is, for 600 bucks, you can't find more fun legally than you can with this XJ right here. I'm pretty sure this is not road legal. <laughs> All right, now we're going to give you guys an update on Caitlin's 41 Ford build. And listen, if you're a Jeep guy or a Jeep gal and uh, you didn't you know, appreciate the jokes, the humor in this episode. That's OK. Just go back and watch it all again. OK, uh, it probably won't change your mind, but it will double our ad revenue. So that'd be nice. I'm going to give you a quick update on the 41 Ford Power Stroke build that we got going on here. Are you? Have you been wearing a Bronco shirt this whole time? No. The Jeep people are going to be so angry with us. Caitlin, you're not using the hammer right. But <laughs> besides that, somebody asked me the other day how to describe what we do here. How would you describe what we do? Low budget, high effort, and mediocre results. <laughs> that sounds about right. Anyways. 7.3 power stroke up here, 41 Ford cab back there. As you can see, we got the uh, pockets replaced if you didn't catch our last video. But we ordered some springs. These guys came in. Turns out uh, the spring diameter of the metal here is about uh, three, a sixteenth greater than the stock spring. So I ordered another set of springs from Rock Auto. These came to us. And I think biblically speaking, this is what's called when you are unequally yoked. <laughs> But they came in the same box. Rock Auto, looking at you. So basically, guys, we're waiting on parts here this week. And the 2001 XJ was basically a last minute, uh, we have nothing to film. Let's see if we can find something to have some fun with over the weekend to get a film out, get a video out. Because I have been, for the last 10 days, um, two days ago, three days ago, I got home. Uh, but 10 days before that, I was in Uganda. So I do that once a year with my ministry that I work with um, out there teaching rural pastors. So we are going to be back on this as soon as the parts come in. I promise you guys it's the next video coming out. We've got some great sponsors lined up for this video um, or for this build. And so we're looking forward to introducing you to them. Caitlin, 
Next week, I'm going to tell you why every car show should have a modern Corvette section. <gasps> Are we getting a Corvette?